Hello, I'm Matt and welcome to Badger Workshop. So last time I got this old bandsaw and got it all stripped down. Now it needs cleaning up and putting back together. As much as I was looking forward to this project, I was not looking forward to this part of it. No one likes stripping paint. But I've got one of these wire cup wheels and with it fitted to the angle grinder, it makes pretty quick work of it, even though it's very messy and it's definitely a full PPE job. So a few messy hours later, and I've got the main cast iron body of the saw all cleaned up. And maybe I've been wearing a respirator for too long, but I really think a part of this band saw looks like a seal. Maybe I'm just starting to see things. I want to get this off the dolly so I can clean the bottom of it. So I get some timber stacked up behind it. Then I can wiggle the band saw over until two of the feet are on this new stack of wood. Now I just wanted to move the dolly forward a bit, but unfortunately my garage is on a slope and it rolled all the way down until it hit my camera. Luckily I had enough timber just in reaching distance to be able to get some bits under there and then I could get it lowered back down, but that was a bit stupid. Then I could just remove a bit of wood, one at a time, until I put it lowered down onto the floor. I've got this old stand that I'm going to lower it onto. So I'll get that positioned and then I could just tilt it over and get it lent onto this. And this would just give me access to the bottom of it. just back to the grinder and more cleaning. So now the main body's done but actually the real work starts and that's cleaning up all the smaller parts. Some of the larger smaller parts I can just do on the bench with the angle grinder. Then the kind of medium smaller parts I can use the post vise, get them clamped up in there and cleaned up. For the very small parts and all the nuts and bolts, I get a wire wheel in the drill press and I can clean them up on that. It definitely felt like I spent days in total doing this, but as these are all imperial nuts and bolts, they're a bit tricky to source, so it's worth spending the time I felt to actually clean these ones up. And it's all original. The wheel cover had this bit of galvanised plate riveted onto it. Definitely not original, so I drilled out the rivets and got that removed. They had some dents in them, so I actually went back to the workshop and straightened them out, but I forgot to film that. Then, it's more grinding to remove that paint. The tyres aren't in terrible condition, but they're certainly not great, so I decided to replace them. I had to cut the old ones off with a Stanley knife. Then you guessed it, it was more grinding. Now if you're bored of watching it, imagine how bored I was actually doing it. So under all the mess, I actually found this. Not the manufacturer, but the distributor. So now I can finally start painting it. I'm going for a smooth finish hammerite. I'm going for this because I had it in stock. This was a nice stage to get to because I've been working on this machine on and off for a couple of months now and I felt I was making it worse, taking it apart, but now I finally feel I'm actually making it better. Getting the paint applied is definitely a quicker process than removing it. 
and I think the seal looks good in black. So now I want to get it back up onto that dolly. So I'm just reversing the process of slowly getting it stacked up on piles of wood. Then hopefully learning some lessons from the previous attempt, I can now get it put back onto the dolly. I don't plan on taking it off anytime soon, so I'm going to get it bolted down with some of these coach bolts. I just get them cut down by hand. Then I can drill through on all four corners. These are 12mm bolts. I get the bolt put through from the underside, get a washer and a nut on and get it tightened down. Now I can finally start getting it put together. I start with the bottom wheel assembly and I get some grease in first. Then I can get the shaft put in and the bearings and tap down into place. The assembly can now get put through the frame and there's three bolts that hold it in place. On the other side, this bolt goes up into the assembly and this will be useful later on to adjust the angle of the wheel to help with the tracking of the bottom wheel. With that in place, I can get it all tightened down, but I'm sure when I get a blade, I'm gonna to have to come back and adjust all this. The bottom pulley can now go back on the shaft and there's a flat spot on it that needs lining up with the hole for the grub screw. The screw can then get put in and tightened down, locking it all in place. There's a grease cup on top, so I get plenty of lithium grease put in until it squirts out the end. This is the tilt mechanism that the table actually bolts to and just one bolt goes through the frame. There's a couple of rollers that are actually permanently installed to the frame so I had to paint around them. Then the lower blade guide can go back on. I've got some new 20 inch polyurethane tires. Now these are pretty expensive so I did consider trying to make my own tyres out of some strips of rubber, but I thought while I had the wheels off, might as well try and do it properly. These were a bit of a struggle to get fitted, but at least I know they're not gonna come off. These tyres were only available in orange, and I really wasn't sure about it, but now I've got them on, I quite like it against the black. The lower wheel can now go back on and locked in place with a grub screw. Now I can work on the top wheel assembly. So I get the shaft and the bearings put back in place. Everything is pretty tight and this rawhide mallet I've got has come in very handy. If I can get it installed, I need to reattach these dovetail plates, or in fact, I'm just gonna get one side attached first. Then I can get the wheel in place, the second dovetail on, and everything tightened up, 
and this probably was the most tricky bit to do on my own. Now to get the blade tightening mechanism reinstalled. So this block goes in and then the screw and hand will go up into it. On the top goes a washer, the spring, another washer and then a couple of bolts to lock it in place. Now the upper blade guide goes on this. The bar goes in this slot and then gets captured in place by this front plate. The guide itself then gets fitted on the bottom. Then on the top of the shaft goes this bit that the blade guard is going to go on to. On the bottom of the machine, there's a couple of identical brackets to go either side to hold the blade guard. So the guard goes over the top wheel and sweeps down one side of the bottom wheel and gets attached in three places. This smaller guard goes on to this bit and it gets raised and lowered with the blade guides. I gave the cast iron table a bit of a clean up with some wet and dry paper and gave it all a clean up with some white spirit before getting it installed. I get it lifted into place and then it's just a couple of bolts installed from the underside to lock it in place. I don't want the cast iron top to rust up again so I'm just going to apply some of this lubricating wax and rub it on. Now I'm just going to grease up this top wheel while I remember. And with everything lubed up it all turns really smoothly. So that's it pretty much back together and that's all I'm going to do for now. So next time we need to get a blade and a motor put on this thing. Thanks for watching, thanks to my patrons and please subscribe for more videos.